Welcome to the Pickup Korea podcast. And today I have a couple listener questions that I thought were really good. And uh, they actually get asked quite often in person, but I haven't really covered them in the podcast or really that much on blog. So um, the first question actually is uh, talk a little bit about the different areas of Seoul. So if you're going out for day game, night game, um, or just in general, what are the differences in the areas of Seoul? So <clears throat> as I mentioned before, really the two, um, two really famous areas are Gangnam and Hongdae. So you have Gangnam on the South River, you have Hongdae up North where all the universities are, but there are a lot, a lot of different areas that, uh, people go to, people live in, people hang out in. So I figured today we can go a little bit in detail about that. So first I'll go over Gangnam. So Gangnam really is the uh, premier neighborhood. Really, it is, uh, it's the richer area. It's very developed, huge volume everywhere, right? A lot of companies, a lot of businesses, a lot of hostess bars, a lot of, uh, academies where students study. So it really has a whole mix of everything, right? Like some districts might be only businesses. Some might be only universities or hogwans, quote unquote academies. Some might be only, you know, bars and clubs or what have you. But the Gangnam area is good because it's developed, it's richer, uh, it's like the Manhattan, so to speak, of Seoul, but it also has a mix of everything, right? You have a mix of all different sort of uh, demographics, I guess you would say, age groups, types of girls, and uh, venues and everything, right? And so <clears throat> it's important to understand that Gangnam itself is not, there is Gangnam Station, which is like the major, major hub, but it is a district. So you have Gangnam Station, you have Shin Nonhyun Station, you have Shinsa, a really nice area called Karoskil, which is sort of the, uh, what would you say? It's sort of the um, like fancier, posh area with lots of nice shops. You have Apgujong Rodeo, which is really, really blown up in the last couple of years with nice lounges and bars and clubs and all kinds of cool uh, pochas, which are like Korean style, uh, like hunting bars, I guess you would say, right? And so there's all kinds of cool stuff there. It's also very, uh, a lot of models hang out there. It's very um, posh, so to speak. And uh, you have all kinds of other areas. You have Coex, which is a huge indoor shopping mall. So really good place to go when, um, you know, it's rainy or snowy or just extremely hot outside. You want some AC, <laughs> you can actually walk around in comfort, right? And so with Gangnam, you really have, you know, really everything. You have the clubs, as I mentioned, you have indoor places to go, you have uh, different stations that have a lot of people. So huge, you know, huge amount of foot traffic. You have very attractive girls that really care about their appearance because it's more of the premier neighborhood, right? And a richer neighborhood, a lot of plastic surgery, your be beauty clinics, fashion uh, shops and what have you. And so, yeah, a lot of people who stay in Korea like over a year, almost all want to live in Gangnam. Not everyone. I mean, it depends on your temperament, but guys that are really into um, really want to live like in a more modern area with like the most attractive girls pretty much all congregate to Gangnam. Uh, so that's a major, uh, major hub, major area. And so, uh, yeah, it has a good mix of also day game. So really one of the best places for day game because in the whole district, just tons of foot traffic and uh, different demographics. And then in terms of night game, now that Corona's over, there's just bars are open, you know, all the bars are back open. Um, tons of new clubs are opening again and the old ones are reopening. So you have all the clubs and everything. So it really isn't missing anything other than there's not as much of the foreigner type bars, like not as much of the, um, you'd almost call them like international party bars, right? Where you go there and it's like all girls that speak English and it's all foreigners congregating there. There are a few places here and there that you can go like that, but um, it's not as uh, popular. Or there's not as many as in a place like Itaewon, right? So I guess we can contrast with Itaewon, which is just dog shit for the most part in the daytime. It can be okay. There's some uh, little bit of foot traffic, not much, little bit of attractive girls in the daytime, but it's really not that great overall, you know, if you're actually trying to go out. Whereas at nighttime, it's just one of the best places. Overall, you have, you know, just tons of bars, lounges, and um, there are more Korean style places or places where, you know, attractive girls hang out, 
but there also are a lot of those sort of like what you would call like international party bars, right? Where they're just all English speakers. Um, some attractive girls hanging out there, sometimes not something, you know, um, most students or most friends that I go sometimes will hang out there. And then you go over to like a club in Gangnam or um, like a nice area, like I mentioned, like Apgujong Rodeo and like the ugliest girls, like the hottest girl in, the, in those international party bars in Itaewon, right? But, but the good thing about Itaewon, you do have a good mix. You have different... Um, uh, you know, different lounge bars that have attractive girls as well. And you have different kinds of venues um, that are almost Western friendly, right? More English speakers, which is good. And so uh, it, it is a place that people really like hanging out, especially foreigners as well. And so Itaewon really, like I mentioned, maybe very high on the night game radar, very low in rating on the day game, uh, going to actually hang out there in the daytime and do some street approaches. And then another neighborhood, as I mentioned, is Hongdae. So Hongdae, you have um, kind of like Gangnam, you have a big, uh, a good mix of like day and night, like a lot of people walking around, huge hub of universities and uh, some businesses and things like that. But uh, you do have a lot of foot traffic. So it is a good place for the daytime to go out, approach. Um, as far as the demographics go, whereas in Gangnam, you had uh, a mix of, you know, night workers, uh, hostesses, um, you know, girls that work at all kinds of companies from Samsung to Hyundai, right? You have all those big companies, you have students with all the English academies, the math academies, um, you have really everything, right? Whereas in Hongdae, it really changes over to mostly university students, right? Which can be a good thing because it's sort of a little bit more specialized, right? If you're into the students and also on the other hand too, a lot of them have to learn English and have to study at least a, a, um, a basic level of English, right? And so you have that, not that all of them can speak English, but there's, you know, with the younger crowd, a lot of them can speak at least some basics, right? Uh, and then of course you have, you know, English majors and girls that lived abroad and what have you. And there are also a lot of the bars there and clubs there that sort of are more of the international style, right? You have like places like Thursday Party, Cocky's Pub, they're more catered for foreigners, uh, very foreign style. You have like beer pong and darts and all the kind of usual things you might be used to in Austin, Texas, or, you know, Boston or wherever, wherever you're coming from. Right. And so, uh, yeah, so home day is overall good. As I mentioned, demographics are students good for day, good for night. Um, good mix of different kind of venues. Um, but I would say if you compare that to Gangnam, less diverse, um, and less, uh, what would you say? Less like posh, less fancy. Right. And so, and with Itaewon, you have kind of a mix of, uh, kind of a mix of everything. You get students, you get workers and, uh, a lot of girls who lived abroad, more internationally minded girls, I guess you would say. And so we have Itaewon, Gangnam and Hongdae. So those are the three ones that really I've written on. Um, you can actually look up on the blog. I have some writings on it. And uh, those are the three places a lot of people go and hang out, but there are tons of other places that I haven't really mentioned and that uh, guys go out to. And so I figured it'd be a good chance to introduce some, uh, what would you call them, like hidden gems, I guess, or not really hidden so much if you live here, but even for some guys who are here, they really only go to those three places. So uh, yeah, they could still be considered hidden, I guess, right? So uh, a couple other places. So there's Jamshil, which is... Uh, about 15 minutes from Gangnam, and it is a very major hub as well. You have a lot of people that live there. It's one of the richer districts because it's pretty much, you know, pretty close to the Gangnam area, but they have this huge tower called Lotte Tower. It's about 124 floors, like the fourth biggest in the world. And what's good about it is it's this huge, like massive complex of underground shopping mall connected to a department store connected to an amusement park which is called lotte world which is like the disneyland right and then you have that huge tower like fourth biggest building in the world and then a huge like six floor mega uh shopping mall lotte world mall connected to it so it's almost like walking around in this massive huge airport complex almost like so uh, yeah you can go there all day and just approach all day and there are a lot of um I've been noticing like, a lot of Korean guys out there approaching because number one, the traffic is really good. And number two, um, it's a good mix of different kind of 
girls as well, different quality as well. So it is a pretty good place to go hang out and approach. And behind it, there's a big lake that people like to go hang out at. Like they walk around, hang out, have coffee or drink. So it's a little bit more laid back there as well called Sokchon Hosu. So you got Jamshil, uh, an area to look into for sure. Um, what I noticed is that a lot of the, whereas in Gangnam, a lot of people live here, Hongdae a lot live there, but oftentimes also it's people going to hang out in those areas. Whereas in Jamshil, I notice you get a lot of either um, like people that work there or people that live in that, uh, it's called Songpa district. So, <clears throat> so it is somewhat, uh, you get almost of a different crowd of more of uh, like local people to that area. So it's a little bit of a different thing. And you do get a mix of uh, different ages and what have you. And so that's an area. And then not far away from there, you have the Gunguk or Gunde. I think it's Kunkuk University, K-O-N-K-O-O-K University in English. It's kind of hard because a lot of these Korean names, it's called Gunde uh, Ipku in Korean. So like the pronunciation is pretty different, but uh, you should be able to find it with that English. And uh, I'll write all of these, uh, the places I'm mentioning in the show notes, so you can check them out in English and Korean. And so, uh, yeah, Gunde is really good because you have like really, really, it almost, it's almost like another version of Hongdae, I guess you would say. But um, it's, uh, I almost feel like even younger crowd, even of a younger, like, yeah, I feel like Hongdae you get like 20 to 26, 27, you know, maybe something like that, whereas in... Gunday, you get that as well, but I feel like there's a more concentration of like 20 to 22 year olds for some reason. And so from what I've heard, it's because not only do you have the universities in that area, but also it's kind of a place where like the young people of Eastern Seoul hang out, right? So that area is called Eastern Seoul. And uh, yeah, there's a whole district on that side and it's sort of the main hub where they go drink and hang out and go shopping. So you do have a couple shopping malls there, uh, smaller ones. You do have a lot of restaurants and like tons of bars and pochas, not really like nightclubs like you would see in Hongdae or Gangnam or Itaewon, but uh, a lot of bars and pochas, more Korean style places um, and pubs and things like that. A lot of volume, so it's a good place as well. And you also have the Han River Park close by, which is pretty cool. Um, and those are, uh, speaking of the Han River Park, very underrated places to go hang out because there's a few of them uh, in Seoul, and when the weather is good, which I was there this weekend, uh, there's the Bampo Han River Park, there's the Tuksam Yuanji uh, Han River Park. So people just go there when the weather is good, they get mats, they order chicken and beer, they hang out all day, you know, you have two girls, two girls, three girls, couples. Um, so it's really good to just like walk around or just go hang out and you can approach girls walking by or go approach girls at the mat on the, uh, on the grass, right? And a lot just, you know, walking around or hang out with friends, jogging, riding bikes, or just chilling, reading a book, or um, just hanging out in general. So it's more of a laid back kind of atmosphere. Yeah, it's really cool. So uh, I will include those two as well, uh, uh, Banpo and Tuksam Yuanji. So cool places to hang out when the weather is good. And so, yeah, that's an advantage of Gunde is you can hang out there. You can walk over to the river park, which is, you know, that's one of the more popular ones right around the corner. So that's a very, very good area. Um, one thing I would say is that from what I've noticed, the Gunde area, Kungkuk University, the English level does seem a lot lower than Gangnam or Jamshil uh, or Hongdae or really anywhere else I've noticed for some reason. So uh, I guess you would keep that in mind. You will meet English speakers anywhere in Seoul, but uh, there definitely is a variation, right? So. If you're in Itaewon, it's going to be very high. If you're in Hongdae, relatively high. Gangnam, it's kind of hit or miss. You know, you might get half that can speak basic, half that can't, right? And then uh, in Gunde, I feel like, <laughs> from my experience, although I speak fluent Korean, just going out there with other guys, I feel like it's, I don't know, maybe 20% can speak English or something. It's one of the lower, uh, like, lower English areas, I guess you would say. So you have Gunde area. Um, also, some other cool areas. There's another place called Chilim, which is, it's really grown to become like the biggest area of like one room, quote unquote, studio apartments, where a lot of girls who move into Seoul from, you know, different cities for work or to study, they all get their rooms there because it's reasonably priced, uh, affordable, cheap, 
and also it's like newer used to be kind of slummy not exactly slums like you would think of in america or third world but just sort of one of the lesser developed areas but after recently going there it's a lot more developed like nicer paved streets brand new shopping mall brand new buildings everywhere so uh what's cool about going there is that if you walk around and do day game it's mostly just girls living alone and who are from other cities so it's kind of the advantage of uh, really just a high congregation of girls who live alone, prob a lot of them single and uh, from other cities. So they're kind of happy to meet new people and uh, a lot more receptive is what I noticed too. A lot more receptive than other areas uh, of Seoul. So that's an area to keep in mind for sure. Very underrated uh, hidden gem, so to speak, right? And so, uh, yeah, you got the Shilim area or S-I-L-L-I-M in English. Um and so demographics, like I mentioned, mostly some of them are native Seoul, uh, native Seoul people, but a lot of them are from Busan, Gwangju, another city, or maybe even like the outskirts of Seoul, but they want to live in the city. And uh, the advantage is it's pretty cool because it is more, um, it's like developing affordable, but also the location is really good because it's on the major uh, line. Number two is kind of the line that goes around the city, goes to all the major areas. So it is on line number two, so it's only about 15 to 20 minutes from Gangnam and about 20 minutes to Hongdae, so you're kind of in the middle. You have, uh, you know, you can get, you can easily go to both places, which is pretty cool. Uh, so Shilim, yeah, I would say overall too, not as much uh, older people, but it's a good mix of like from early 20s to like early 30s. So you got that demographic. And uh, as far as the English levels go, I think it's also hit or miss from what I've seen. It's sort of uh, um, maybe a little bit lower than, definitely probably a little bit lower than Gangnam or Hongdae, but higher than a place like uh, uh, Gondae, as I mentioned before. And so, yeah, Shilim is a pretty cool area. Um, and then let's see some other hidden gems. Uh, there's also the express bus terminal, which is pretty cool because you have three major subway lines going through it. You have a massive underground shopping mall with all women's clothing, which is pretty cool. And then you have um, like different malls that are connected to it. So it is also also like uh, also like I mentioned in Jump Show, it's almost like another huge, massive indoor complex that you can walk around for hours and uh, approach different types of girls. Some of them are like richer because it's in the Gangnam area. Some of them are just transiting through. Some are there just to go shop or hang out. It's kind of cozy because they have AC inside or, you know, heater if it's winter time or whatever. So, um, yeah, all kinds of cool venues, bars, crap beer pubs, good restaurants in there, <clears throat> department store, uh, cheap underground shopping for girls that want to buy cheap crap too. <laughs> so you have a good mix, a little bit of a mix of everything. And it is like a five minute walk from the river. So you can go to the Bampo. Uh, Hangang River that I was mentioning, the park there. So it's a good little, uh, you can kind of uh, combine those up as well. Um, so that's another major area that people like to go to hang out at. Uh, let's see some other gyms that are other neighborhoods. So we've mentioned so far, Gangnam District, which includes obviously Shinsa, Shinnonhyun, <coughs> other districts or other, sorry, other neighborhoods. You have Gangnam, you have Itaewon, you have Hongdae, Gundae, Jamshil, uh, express bus terminal, uh, Shilim. So I've mentioned several, several neighborhoods. Uh, let's see, any other, maybe I can leave you with one or two more that I can think of. Uh, some other ones that are pretty unique or pretty like up and coming. There's a place called Songsu, which is kind of like popular these days, really in recent uh, a couple years. Uh, they have some nice cafes there. there. It's really close to a place called Seoul Forest, which is another one of those chill Kind of places people like to go hang out get some chicken and beer or chill or um yeah it's one of those more laid back places you can go hang out at and uh as far as like venues not really for nightlife at all that's one that i would say kind of like uh shilim as well the previous place i mentioned not really nightlife areas but good to go do some day game in perhaps or go on dates and things like that um so you have that and then also one other district i wanted to mention uh, it's called actually Myeongdong, and I think that it should be coming back. This is a major area that we like to go to before because it always had crazy volume, a lot of shoppers, a lot of tourists too. If you're interested in meeting Japanese uh, girls or Chinese girls, there's one place that we really, really, really um, 
overall really like to go, um, but it really got gutted out. It really got bankrupt. It really became like a ghost town due to COVID. But I really see that now the borders are opening back up. I really think that it is going to probably in the next, I don't know, maybe month, two, three, I could see it becoming another one of the major areas to go back to. It's really good. A lot of tourists that are traveling there alone or with their friend, um, a lot of motels nearby, a lot of you know restaurants and places to go. So it is a really, really fun uh, place to go hang out at and go meet some girls and uh, some tourist girls that are just in town for a short time, right? And so, yeah, you have that. And then um, another district. I want to leave you off with one more. Another one that can be good is, I would say, okay, another area that I want to leave you off with um, is called Yoido. And so Yoido also, they have um, one of the three major Han River parks, which you can go hang out at, as I mentioned before, but this is also uh, one of the major business districts too. So you have all these big companies, um, nice buildings, you have really, really attractive office ladies walking around. So if you're into the office look, that's one of the one of the best places to go for sure, um, as well as with Yoksam, which is near Gangnam, which is in Gangnam, basically. So those two areas are really good for the office girls. And uh, yeah, it's just a different vibe out there. You have the park, the Han River Park. You have just huge office buildings. You also have the congressional uh, building nearby. So you have, you know, politicians and uh, people that work in that field too. So just a good mix of like professionals, I guess you would say. So a lot of people like the more classy professional types, you know, driven business chicks. So that's a pretty good place to go. And uh, of course there you don't really get kind of the opposite. You don't get the younger um, uh, like Hongdae kind of crowd or Gundae crowd, the university crowd, but you get more of the later 20s, mid to late 20s to early 30s, uh, quite a lot of those. So um, a little bit more mature, but oftentimes very, very attractive because in Korea, a lot of these major companies, oftentimes they really want to hire uh, more attractive like secretaries and um, staff in general. There is definitely a discrimination against, you know, it's not that they don't hire ugly people, but they, they prefer to hire people with a similar, they call it spec specs, which are like, you know, university and what have you. But uh, these big companies often want to hire s somewhat attractive girls in their office. It's definitely a thing here, not as much in maybe the West or America or what have you, but definitely a thing here. So Yoido is definitely an area to check out. Uh, really, really good. All these places overall that I mentioned are really good for day game around 6 p.m. when everyone's getting off of work or getting off of academy or uh, going to meet friends for dinner. You know, you just have, uh, we call it like 6 to 7 or really 6 to 8 is sort of like a uh, rush hour where you just have tons of people out and about. So really, really good for volume. And then again, of course, you know, in the afternoons and uh, after lunch, you get more of the people that kind of work freelance or they have the day off. So you, you have the advantage of maybe even meeting ones that are free and bringing them on an insta date or just having more uh, relaxed interaction. So they're good anytime, but if you're looking for the volume, really six to eight. And then on top of that, uh, now that as of today, literally as of today, all the Corona restrictions have been lifted uh, besides the mask mandate, which I think is in two more weeks. So now all the clubs in the Gangnam area, Itaewon area, Hongdae area, are going to be uh, all night again, or like a lot of them are to like 5 a.m. Some of them go to like 11 a.m. Some maybe earlier, like 4 a.m. So um, yeah, if you're into the night game thing, really Korea starts a little bit late typically. Like you can go out at like 10, 9.30, 10. Um, and then it really goes until really, depending on where you're going, 4 or 5 a.m. Or the after clubs that go to like 11 a.m. So um, yeah, that's a big difference. Like if you're coming from California or somewhere like that, where everything closes at like 1.30 or 2, uh, you can actually easily go out in Korea at like 1 a.m., start at 1 a.m. and, you know, do your whole night like that too. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. I thought this would be good to cover the different areas that you can game in. And if anyone has any questions on these specific areas, maybe later on I can go into more detail on uh, some of these specific areas. And so another quick question that I wanted to cover is that, uh, is Korean really important? Do you need Korean? Is it required? Is it necessary? And so I did read a whole, uh, write a whole blog on this topic, 
And so you can read that and uh, actually I'll include that in the uh, YouTube link here for the podcast. But I mean, it's common sense. Is the language going to help you? Yes, because you can talk to more people. You know, if it's say, say on the street, if 10 people out of 10 people say six can speak English or five, then if you speak Korean, then obviously you can talk to 10 out of 10 people, right? You can at least try to talk to them. Um, if you don't speak it, then you might be more limited to half of them or the ones that are sort of, uh, you can kind of get by with your body language and speaking slow and uh, working your vibe, right? Using your subcommunications, which also works. I've had plenty of students do that. But of course, um, it's a tougher path, right? And so, yeah, does learning the language help? Yes. Is it necessary? No, because there are a lot of English speakers here. So, it's not like a place like Taiwan where it seems like in Taipei, it seems like almost everyone speaks English there or maybe like uh, try to compare. Let's see. So Taiwan has a lot of English speakers. Uh, another place like um, uh, obviously Singapore. There's places in Asia where English is like an official language, right? So it's kind of an unfair comparison. But um, yeah, in general, a place like maybe Taiwan where it's very high or Taipei where it's very high and then a place like Japan where it's like really, really low, right? Like, like in some cities you'll walk around and, uh, like no English, right? <laughs> like 5%, 10% maybe. Right. So I'd say Korea is right in the middle of that. So it's not like everyone in Taipei who speaks English, it seems like, or it's not like no one in Tokyo or someplace like that, where it seems like almost no one, a very low percentage speak English. I would say Korea is pretty much in the middle. So if you're doing a volume of approaches, 10 approaches, it's fair to say, like, if you're moving around to different areas, at least half of them could understand you, could communicate. And among those, there's ones that are just absolutely fluent, right? They studied English since their third grade here. They get tutoring. They study abroad. Um, they watch a lot of, like, American shows. So speaking English is not a weird thing here. It's somewhat normal, but it's definitely not everyone, right? And so, um, obviously, learning the, the language helps. Also, even if you don't really plan to learn the language, I would say learning some phrases. So for example, in the Pickup Korea ebook, which I'll link in the notes, uh, I include a whole section on like useful uh, phrases and vocabulary and like sentence structures that you can use. So even if you use like a few basics, right? Like I'm going over there, I got here from this place, you look like this, right? Like some real, real basic stuff that can help. Or even just, you know, some kind of basic expression, like I'm hungry or I want to have a drink right now. Let's go over there. Even things like that. And even if you're not good at Korean, but they see you trying, they can kind of, it's kind of, they give you respect. It's kind of endearing. It's kind of cute in that regard too, right? And so, um, yeah, definitely it doesn't hurt to learn. It definitely helps to learn a little bit, but is it necessary? No, because plenty of guys live here for years. They learn nothing. They speak nothing and they, you know, some of them do very well. Um, some other students I've coached speak almost nothing or they speak literally zero and uh, have gotten amazing, amazing results, right? And so it's not something you need. However, it is, um, it does give you a boost in terms of not only how many people you can talk to, but also, you know, relatability for some girls, especially the ones that don't speak English, right? And um, connection with them and showing that you understand their world, right? So it does give you that advantage for the non-native uh, speakers. And then even for the ones that speak English, even if you speak just a little, it almost, you know, a little, I mean, just like a handful of phrases that you can pick up quickly. It will give them like, wow, that's cute. It gives them, you know, gives them sort of, uh, it's just kind of satisfactory or sort of endearing or something like that, right? And so, yeah, I would say that if you're here for a shorter trip, you know, a week or two weeks or even a month, I wouldn't really put much focus on it, maybe a handful of phrases, but, um, and they're not even necessary, but it's just, you know, another thing to have to relate, right. to show you understand the world a little bit and respect Korea. But, uh, if you're here for a long term, I would definitely recommend, um, spending some time learning the language because ultimately it's just better for your life to know the language of where you're living. And also, um, one thing is a lot of really, really hot girls like in Gangnam consider that they have no motivation to learn English, right? Because they're getting paid through their looks by doing modeling or working at a hostess bar or 
working in the beauty industry. And so English was never, uh, you know, something they needed to focus on, something they really cared about, right? And so, yeah, just consider that. And so uh, I think that I answered both questions I got in the mailbag here. So until next time.